I grew up playing a lot of video games and watching a lot of movies from China and Japan. And when you watch those kind of things, you notice that there is maybe a, an influence from Buddhism or Shintoism or Taoism or something, some sort of Eastern religion. So I thought that I would investigate these things a little bit more thoroughly, a little bit more deeply. Of course, we all have lives. So yes, I was grew up in America, just like every other kid like me in suburbia, upper middle class family. So that that's the same. And you know, I was in the Marine Corps, joined, uh, did martial arts my whole life. So Marines, I wanted to be active and uh, stay healthy. I thought it was a way to exercise, and so yeah. But. Through the martial arts, I discovered some teachers who had other practices. I feel like a lot of people my age and younger, older, a lot of Americans, we, <laughs> we have like no, we have no idea mm. what this stuff is about. Like when you tell, like when you tell a Japanese person that a lot of Americans think that Buddhists go to church and worship Buddha, like. Christians go to church to worship Jesus, they kind of laugh. Right. Because Buddhists don't necessarily worship Buddha. No. When we go to a, especially in a Zen practice, right. we're going to practice. If we say a prayer, a chant, we're actually just reciting the teachings. So it's a reminder of what the teachings are, as opposed to worshiping or praying for, to get something, or even thank you. Although in some ways that's kind of true, but uh, we're not asking for to gain something. Okay. When we're praying, what we're doing is we're chanting the teachings as it was been chanted. We think we can become Buddha. Then we don't care who created this world, and we didn't, don't care who like uh, ruled this world. So we care, take care about how this world is, then how to make people happy or how to live in good way. So that's a big difference between them. Is that supposed to change your like internal state in some way? Like even just the, the way you think, nothing metaphysical or anything, like what exactly, what's the overall purpose whenever you chant? If, the, if you're not asking for something from God or whatever. Right, so the, the actual purpose is just to chant. That's it. Just, just to recite the teachings that they've, as they've always been recited. Now in each country, the, how you pronounce that changes. So the Japanese have their own way of pronouncing the teachings as they've been handed through from okay. one country to the next. Okay. But the purpose is simply to recite those teachings. Is that kind of, and forgive me for my like, lack of knowledge, but is that like the kind of Zen thing where you're just supposed to be there? Sure, it's just like the sitting. We sit just to sit. We <laughs> chant just to chant. We eat just to eat. As long as we keep it as one simple thing, we're doing everything within the one thing. Okay. But if you divide it into two, we only get two. Is that, is that simplicity? Is that the point is to be simple? Or the, there's, I don't know if that's I'm already simple. dividing right. it up. <laughs> yeah, I at, think at, so. At right. that point. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I think that's, anytime we put it into words, we're in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. But, that's what we're doing, right? Right, right, right. So what else? Yeah. That's the only choice we have. We have to talk about it sometime. Even if I go to the Zendo and I just sit, and then I say, thank you very much, and <laughs> everybody leaves, that's great. Right. We're really doing the practice. Is, is, is that like a um, Buddhist across the board, maybe not even just Zen Buddhist, is that like a, a method to be happy? Well, the original teaching, the idea was to release our suffering. Right, escaping the cycle of suffering. Right. Right. 
So, and that's for all Buddhists. So in order to do that, this practice that's already been designed will give us that result. But if we do it for that result, we've already split it. Okay. So uh, it's in a very, it's a, it's a dichotomy. We mm -hmm. have to sit just to sit. If we do it for the result, we've already split it. Will we uh, get there? Will we, do we have that result? We have the result simply by sitting. Every time I sit, I'm already practicing. Oh, uh, okay. So I don't have to practice to practice. I'm already practicing. <laughs> right, right, right. <laughs> to investigate whether there was a God or not a God or any of those kinds of things on creation. That, that, that's, that wasn't the issue. Okay. If we wanted to relieve suffering in this body, in this life, this time, then this is what we need to focus on. So that, that's one of the things that defines Buddhism separate from the other religions of his day. In that context, we believe in like Buddhism. We don't care about the origin of the universe or we don't care of the origin of the human being, we just, yeah, get to know this kind of realism. It's pretty important for us. Do you feel like you've uh, personally gotten close to Satori? Enlightenment? Well, in our particular teaching, every time we behave in an awakened manner, that's an awakened manner that's occurring. Okay. So it's, it's not something that you acquire. It's not something that you attain to. It's, it's the way we behave. Okay. So it, there's not so much enlightened people, uh, is in our teaching. Uh, Suzuki Sensei, uh, Suzuki Roshi, is one of the ones who's most famous for saying it, uh, Shunru Suzuki. And what he said was, there's not so much enlightened people as enlightened behaviors. Okay, so that that act itself that you're doing is enlightened, but you, it's not it's, it's, the it, point it, is to be an it, enlightened person. It, it's irrelevant whether I'm enlightened or not. What's the only thing that matters is how we behave. Okay. Do we behave as human beings? What's the main difference between Zen Buddhism and regular let's, Buddha, and Buddhism? Good, good point. So Buddhism in, envelopes every sect that came off of Shakyamuni Butsu and a couple others. Okay. So Shakyamuni Butsu for us would be the original Buddha. Siddhartha in Gautama. So, right. right. He's in India and he is studying the, their shamanistic practices of the day that we now call Hindu, right. Hindi, right? And uh, again, th that's a modern name. Back then it was just a whole variety of practices. Right. Probably called the Dharma, which okay. we also call Buddhism the Dharma. But he determines certain principles and certain practices that are primary and rejects a few other things that are becoming accepted on the other side of things. So that becomes what we now call Hindu, and his starts to be called Buddhism. The original one for Zen, we talked about earlier, was Jhana Buddhism in uh, India. Okay. And according to the Zen teaching, when Shakyamuni Butsu was awakened, he was doing Jhana meditation. Okay. And it was a natural meditation that he had actually discovered as a boy and rediscovered as an adult that awakened him. It's a very simple meditation we call it. Uh, jhana would be absorption meditation. You are completely absorbed in reality and that reality is completely absorbed in you. Okay. Much, much like uh, if you had a sponge in water. So okay. there are two things, but if you put a little pressure like gravity on the sponge, suddenly it sucks up the water, doesn't it? So is that sponge or is that water? Both? Right, that's jhana. Okay. That's absorption. The sponge okay. absorbed the water and the water absorbed into the sponge. So that's how Zen wants to be in the world. To, to think that we're not connected, that's, that's the, the, the illusion. Okay. If you think we're so separate that we're not connected, it's not that we're not individual. It's not that the sponge, you, you, the sponge absorbs the water, the water doesn't disappear. Right, 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 right. There's still water in there. Right. So is this like a, a, a person that's that's not enlightened? It's starting to sound like not that reality is a, is a lie, but the person's perception of reality might not be exactly right. It's incomplete. Incomplete. Because he's separated things out of it. Okay. 
And so this is what he thinks the sponge is over there and the water is over there. He doesn't realize that it's all connected. It's all interlinked. So I don't, I don't want to say the, the point of Zen Buddhism, but this is like a big focus of Buddha, Zen Buddhism is to start to realize these kind of things. Zen Buddhism says that we don't have to start to realize these things, that we already know them. Ah, uh, so you come upon the realization. So all we have to do is behave in this awakened manner every moment of every day, and we are behaving in an awakened manner every moment of every day. This one is probably the most mysterious. And it's the most, you know, obviously it's the most infused with Japanese culture. What exactly, basically, yeah, what's the most basic question? What is Shintoism? So let's clarify, I'm not Shinto priest. Okay, I'm for a, sure. I'm a Zen priest, but okay. in our particular case, I have talked to several Shinto priests, and we talked a little bit about mix, match, and merged. Right. So a lot of this is infused into the Zen training and other Buddhist training that I have. I've had this conversation so many times with Japanese people, and it's that when you ask a Japanese person, what is what is Shintoism? They'll say, everything has a kami in it. Everything has a god in it. Hmm. And basically, the explanation stops there. So I'd like to know something more deeply about that type of stuff. If, sure. If you know it. I know you're mainly Buddhist, but... <laughs> <laughs> so the Shinto is, again, uh, they're talking about the spirit of things. Uh, again, four or five thousand year old history. It wasn't just Shinto. It wasn't one thing. And this is why it gets confusing and difficult for people to talk about. It was the indigenous practices of Japan. Every area, every group, every clan would have had something a little different. Okay. It only became Shinto in contrast to Buddhism, in contrast to the Jukyo, the Confucian Buddhist Taoist group that came. Oh, so Buddhism Then they had, they had to call it something. Okay. And so it became Shinto. To is the same Do, the same... Right. Kind of, so the Shin is for Kami. It's the gods. So it's the way of the gods. Shinto. But it's not gods in always, as in the same sense as in the West, but not too far off from the er early gods of... Uh, the West, you know, we had multiple gods, or even right. East India had multiple gods. Right? It, it, these old ancient shamanistic practices all had this kind of beliefs, right? Where it gets a little confusing again with Japanese and the kami is that that's one word kami for these gods, but it isn't one type of god. There were earthly gods, spiritual gods, elemental gods. So there's a god of the rock, there's a god of the wind, there's a god of the storms, right? Some of my favorites. And then there's the kind of mythological gods, the creator gods. Right. Right? And then there's people who became deified and became gods. So all of these are kami, because everything has kami. And when <laughs> so you that's say why they stop there, because it, it's, it's so convoluted. How do you talk about that? For me, kami really talks about those who came before. So it okay. could have been a god, but it's talking about everybody who came before that had some reason to remember them can be a kami. I mean, everybody is as death, that they're that spirit. It's the spirit of everything. Okay. Right? Uh, so anything can have kami in it. Everything does have this kami idea in it. It's not really called kami at that time. There's other words, but okay. we'll stick to one word. <laughs> okay, yeah, for simplicity's sake. Right. Okay. So... That's why. It isn't just one thing. It's the spirit of everything. Okay. Everyone. Like, I, I would have this conversation, like, for example, at Starbucks in Japan, and you sip sipping your cup, and they'll be like, well, even your cup is a kami. Yeah. And it kind of blows your mind as a Westerner. It's, if you think of spirit or energy, doesn't everything have energy in it? Okay. Right? So, again, if we use kami in that broad sense, then, yeah. Everything, everything. It means like we need to cherish the cup or we need to use cup or uh, 
like a dish very carefully. So it has a very it has kind of um, this dish is not just think. This is made from uh, someone made this dish uh, from the bottom of their heart. So that's why this dish is here. Then it's you can use it. So please. Uh, use it carefully, then please appreciate it in the context of dish. I think that's kind of idea, isn't it? Is this is this the kind of thing where all the kami, all the gods, are a manifestation of one god? And and I think that was an Indian. Indians later that some of the Brahmanistic uh, religions and the Druids did it when they when they contacted Christianity too. Right, right, right. They had no problem with there being a one and only god. And everything else being manifestations of it. Yeah, different manifestations. And, and some Hindu sects, as you mentioned, I believe, also have that, where everything is a manifestation of the single force. And in that sense, all these kami are manifestations of the sing whatever that single force is. That under Shintoism. Right, under Shintoism, back to Shintoism. Okay. That regulates, not regulates, that is infused in everything. Right, right, right. Everything is a. Yeah, like Star a manifestation Wars, right, force, of, right. yeah, so it's, it's like a force type of thing. <laughs> so yeah. everything's a manifestation of that. Right, right, and right. And for simplistic sake, we call it, in this case, kami. There are other words. Even but Japanese it, it, this, this person at the top, or person or it, whatever, force or whatever, is, it, do they think in that way? Or? No, because it wouldn't be something, a singular thing on the top. It okay. is obviously everything. Totalitarian. It, it is everything, not... Totality. Right, it is the totality of everything, not okay. just the creation, not just what started it all. God is in everywhere. God, so you should be an avatar of God. Then I should be the avatar of God. That's the idea of Japanese people's God notion. So it's totally different from Western people's God. Okay. It's, it's more of a thing that you should respect rather than an actual spiritual, like an, I don't know, like an actual thing. Exactly. So it's not a thing. It has something. Mind, or it has kind of heart or uh, warmth on it. So a little bit different. This heavenly kami, like Ama, Ama Terasu and Inazuma, and I think one more that I'm forgetting right now, they're they're the probably the closest to like an Abrahamic religion type of deity. Yes. Amaterasu not so much because that's the sun god or sun goddess. So okay. that that's an elemental kami. Ah, but okay. The others would be mythological gods of creation that created Japan, created the Japanese people. Okay. And you know, if you, it depends on how you read it, they created the world, but they talk specifically about Japan. So to them, probably Japan was the world. Right. Yeah. For sure. Especially at or, that time. Right. So. That's the way it's written. They, they don't define whether it's the whole world or Jap Japan so cleanly like we would. Okay, all right. But yes, they would be close. I mean, they're, they're creative gods. And they, but they belong to a whole family of gods, so it's not just still, it's not a single god. Okay, all right. Right? So but these are the ones who created our world. Conservative Shintoism Shinto people might believe in that, like the origin of universe are like Izanagi, and uh, they, the, like there were like two people, then they got like fight and uh, the new new creation, a new type of human being were born, then it's going to be spread, or then the, the god is there, or then they kind of kind of created the human or something like that, but. Like, I think 99% of Japanese people believe it's a myth. It's just a kind of story. Now that we're nearing the end of the conversation, we're trying to reconcile all of this stuff. Is Buddha a kami? No. No? Really? Not in, not in that sense. I mean, we, we talk about everything being a kami, but right. <laughs> in that sense, yes, he's a kami, just like everything is a kami. But he's not a kami. He's a Buddha. He's a man who awakened. So they they do separate these kind of ideas. I mean, it, it, usually. I wouldn't say usually, but in this case, they certainly did. Okay, I got it. Because it, it seemed like if usually it's all mixed, matched, and merged. Right, 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 right. And they did do that with some bodhisattvas, where 
this kami is the same as this bodhisattva. Yeah. So that they m matched it that way. Did you find, um, I know you grew up as a Buddhist and in a Buddhist environment, but I was wondering, um, do you find Buddhism to be deeply moving? Mm -hmm. I went to the Buddhism training, the, uh, Mount Hie, which is the fundamental training spot of Ten Dai Sect. And during Buddhism training, I looked down on the beautiful lake uh, under the mountain, which was it was really beautiful. It was like more than I, uh, I saw the like beautiful nature. It was kind of uh, enlight enlightened point. And then because I thought uh, we can spend money or we can time on anything that we can, but like watching things or listening to birds singing or something like that, I just. Uh, fail to respect everything. I think most important part is just to live our lives sincerely, whether we're a Buddhist or a Christian or Jewish or Muslim or Hindu or whatever we choose. We know what good behavior is. Let's live like that. Let's help each other as uh, interlocked, interlinked uh, human beings. Whatever we choose to really uh, live it sincerely for uh, almost all of those include things like no harming and no lying. More importantly is, is living as a human being, a real sincere true human being.